Well, let's talk books. And top of the morning to you. And the proper response if someone says that to you is, and the rest of the day. about today is Irish writers then and now probably one of my favorite topics and in fact before the days of the virus uh, we had a uh, program here at the library every couple of months or so it was entitled uh, Ireland forever and we would pick certain topics about Ireland and I'd make a presentation. It was such fun. And we'll be doing it again once this horrible virus passes. We also had another book group called Let's Talk Books. And what that was, it was a monthly meeting where we'd talk about books of history, both fiction and nonfiction. That was great fun also. And we will be doing that uh, hopefully within the next few months. But I chose this topic today because in a few days, it will be St. Patrick's Day. You'll see this lovely statue here of the patron saint of Ireland. This statue was one of my grandmothers. So, uh, hopefully she's with us today in spirit. Uh, and I was thinking of what kind of topic I should have for St. Patrick's Day. There's so many Irish topics that we could choose. There's Irish music. I have just two words to say there. Van Morrison. That's all I have to say. We could talk about the land of Ireland. I have some beautiful, beautiful books, pictorial works on Ireland, one of the most beautiful, beautiful places in the world. I could sit and look at these beautiful, beautiful books forever. I've been very fortunate I've been to Ireland three times, and I am praying that I'll be able to get back there one more time. So those were some topics, but then the most intriguing thing uh, to me about the Irish is the word, both the spoken word and the written word. There is something very special about the Irish and talk. The Irish people have a wonderful uh, lyrical language and way of speaking called the brogue. And in the old days, that word was derogatory by uh, the colonial masters, uh, but it has now such a beautiful meaning. Uh, the Irish people have a tradition of having open houses. Everyone's welcome. No one's a stranger. Of course, that's the best part of being Irish, but that's what we focus on around St. Patrick's Day. So the word both written and, and uh, spoken for me is the essence of being Irish. I did bring, as you can see, a number of books to talk to you about. We probably won't be able to get to all of them, but maybe I will um, uh, provide some interest for you so you can come in and check out some of these books. Speaking of St. Patrick, one of the oldest works um, 
uh, Irish works is St. Patrick's autobiography. It's called The Confessions. Perhaps uh, there's so many myths about St. Patrick, um, but you probably know he was a Roman well-to-do young man and he was taken by invaders to become a slave, a slave in Ireland. Uh, he worked for years for a master as a shepherd. He uh, became a, um, a very religious during his time of trials and uh, he asked the Lord for help he was a firm believer in dreams. He had a dream of how to escape, which he followed through. He did return to Britain. However, he had more dreams where the people of Ireland were crying for him and wanted him to come back and help them. So, of course, he followed his dream, returned to the country, and made such an impression on the history of Ireland from there. What a phenomenal man. Uh, that's quite a book. Another wonderful book is the Book of Kells, which I'm sure you've all heard about. I've had the pleasure of seeing this book at Trinity College in Dublin. It was for me, like going to Mecca, um, it is a miracle that that book survived. The history of that book, it was written in the uh, maybe 400s, 500s, I forget exactly when, and beautifully illustrated book. And then, of course, there were so many invaders that came to Ireland. Uh, they would come and ransack monasteries. Uh, the Book of Kells was found in a bog. It's jeweled case taken by the invaders, but thank God they left the book itself. And it's considered uh, one of the great treasures of the world. We have many books here on calligraphy and illuminated books, which I am sure you would love. Another tradition of the Irish, most of whom in the early days uh, um, were illiterate. Um, in fact, one of my grandmothers who came from Ireland, all four did, all my grandparents, but one was not able to read or write and um, came to this country like so many other immigrants to make a better world for their children and grandchildren. There's a wonderful writer called Frank Delaney. He's written many wonderful books about Irish history. This book is one of his I in particular like, and it's the story of the traveling Irish storyteller who in the old country days would go from town to town have, and tell stories, have them memorized, beautiful poetry, a wonderful tradition in Ireland. I strongly recommend this book. Um, and so many other wonderful uh, Irish writers followed um, in more modern times. Jonathan Swift, uh, Gulliver's Travels, his poem to his uh, lady, uh, Stella, and of course, his scathing work called uh, Modest Proposal, which castigated the um, uh, um, invaders, the final invaders of Ireland and how they treated the peasants. Uh, there's uh, Another wonderful book that I'd like to bring to your attention, the Irish can kind of exaggerate things at times. How's this for a title? How the Irish saved civilization. But there's a lot of truth to it too. Written by a very learned man, Thomas Cahill. 
and it talks about how the monasteries and the monks of early Ireland uh, help save and preserve Western civilization as the mainland of Europe was being invaded. So I recommend this book to you. Uh, we could talk about some more modern Irish writers now. Uh, one of my favorite, and I'm reading one of his plays right now, is George Bernard Shaw. I don't know if you're familiar with his work, but his is the kind of book as you're reading, your fingers almost start burning from uh, what he has to say. So you have to put the book down on occasion and calm yourself. One of uh, my favorite plays of his, and of course he wrote uh, Pygmalion, which is the basis of My Fair Lady, but one of my favorites of him, of his is about Joan of Arc. Absolutely breathtaking story on that wonderful saint. Uh, the poetry of William Butler Yeats, who is Ireland personified. Uh, uh, he, he is a marvel. Um, and not only his poetry, but also his theater work. Um, we have many, many of his books here also. Oscar Wilde, um, uh, who shares, uh, I think one of his uh, mothers, uh, the mother's maiden name might be the same uh, name that I carry now. So I have a special affinity for him. Uh, there's a wonderful woman uh, writer, Alice Taylor. We have a number of her books, and she talks about growing up in Ireland, like the 30s through the 50s, quench the lamp, to school through the woods, country days. You read these books and you just want to go and live there again. Romanticize, but it's a wonderful break from the troubles of uh, some of the modern world. There's another wonderful writer, Ed, Edward Rutherford. Uh, he writes wonderful books on many lands, and this is his work about the founding of Ireland, the Princes of Ireland. I strongly recommend that. There's also the wonderful series by Patrick Taylor. Um, a Dublin student doctor. He's written a number of books following uh, the life of the fictionalized doctor in the country days of Ireland. It's a wonderful series that I strongly recommend. Another wonderful uh, modern writer is Morgan Llewellyn. This is her book on the uprising of 1916, which led to, uh, finally, Ireland's independence. The poet that I mentioned before wrote a wonderful, wonderful book about the brave leaders of that rebellion. A couple of them were school teachers, and they did end up being executed by the British, which was a huge mistake that led to the whole countryside rising up. Uh, this is a wonderful book. Part of the poem has to do with uh, the words, Ireland, a terrible beauty is born. This is a wonderful book it's uh, what's written maybe 20 or 30 years ago by Leon Uris uh, and his wife. It's a, a photographic history of Ireland and it's just beautiful. A lot about the troubles of Ireland um, and how it remains still a separated country. Um, but these are just some 
of the wonderful Irish uh, writers that I'd like to let you know about. A real modern, wonderful uh, woman writer, I think she recently passed, Nuala O'Fallon, Are You Somebody? And it talks about a more modern time of living in Dublin. When I started it, I did not like it. Uh, by the time I finished it, I did not want it to end. So to get a touch of modern uh, living in Dublin, may I recommend this book. So as you can see, uh, this is a wonderful, wonderful table full of Irish fiction, saints, beautiful Waterford crystal, and I'd like to finish with, this is a beautiful book I have, A Treasury of Irish Blessings. It's a beautiful book. One of my fav favorite sayings. May you live all the days of your life. Thank you and enjoy.